ஹலோ வெல்கம் பேக் டு லேர்ன் ஃபிசிக்ஸ் இன் டுடேஸ் டாபிக் வி ஆர் கண்டினியூவிங் வித் தேர்மோ டைனாமிக்ஸ் In last class, we learned till our first law of thermodynamics, isn't it? That is, delta Q equals, that is, amount of and heat energy given to the system is equal to, the it is dividing it into as internal energy and the rest will be work done. Isn't it? Like that, it is delta Q equals delta U plus delta W. okay this is how it is changing delta q equals delta u plus delta w if it is if this work is happening at constant temperature if this is happening at constant temperature what will be the change in internal energy change in internal energy will be equal to zero so that for delta q equals delta w if t is constant okay delta u equals zero therefore delta q equals delta w work done how we can find out work done force into displacement isn't it work done equals force into displacement force equals we can write it as pressure into area okay so into displacement if displacement is happening for a small displacement because of the force that is a into delta s what will be a into delta s this will be equal to p into delta v then for delta w equals p into delta v for a constant pressure like that also we can write down okay now we are going to find out specific heat capacity okay specific heat capacity in last Uh, chapter also we learned about the specific heat capacity what is specific heat capacity amount of heat rejected or absorbed per unit mass of a substance isn't it unit mass of a substance for to raise 1 degree celsius temperature what is the amount of heat energy in that's to be given to the system to raise 1 degree celsius temperature that means if a temperature change is happening as 1 degree celsius and for 1 kg mass of a substance how much heat energy is required amount of heat energy absorbed or rejected to give a change in temperature of 1 degree celsius for a 1 kg mass that heat energy required is called as specific heat capacity specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy absorbed or rejected to give a change in temperature of 1 degree celsius for a 1 kg mass of substance that is specific heat capacity next we learned about the molar specific heat capacity remembering what is molar specific heat capacity molar specific heat capacity okay that is for one mole of substance that is if mu equals 1 uh, that is delta t equals 1 degree celsius then how much heat energy is required okay so specific heat capacity we wrote it as delta q divided by m delta t remembering i guess last chapter that is thermal properties of matter we learned all those things that's why i'm uh, telling it fast okay c is equal to delta q divided by mu delta t okay this is space molar specific heat capacity if molar specific heat capacity we are finding out for constant volume then we can say it as cv okay if it is for constant volume it is cv if it is for constant pressure it is cp now what will be the specific heat capacity of water the in uh, last chapter we learned specific heat capacity of water is very high during uh, while studying about the convection also we learned the same thing isn't it specific heat capacity of water is very high okay so here c and this is temperature first it will be decreasing and then it will be increasing like that only the graph for specific heat capacity of water 
that is it is decreasing so the generally how we can represent that specific heat capacity specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required for water in 1 gram of substance to raise the temperature from 14.5 degrees celsius to 15.5 degrees celsius okay the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature from 14.5 degree celsius to 15.5 degree celsius for 1 gram of substance that is called as the specific heat capacity of water okay so you understood what is meant by specific heat capacity of water specific heat capacity of water is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature from 14.5 degrees celsius to 15.5 degrees celsius in 1 gram of water that is specific heat capacity specific heat capacity what will be the unit of specific heat capacity that is joule per kilogram per kelvin okay this is joule and this is kilogram this is kelvin okay this will be joule per kilogram per kelvin this will be the uh, unit of specific heat capacity okay so here while we are uh, in SI unit the specific heat capacity of water is 4186 joule per kilogram per kelvin this will be the specific heat capacity of water okay understood now we are going to find out a relation connecting cp and cv cp is the specific heat capacity of at constant pressure the cp at uh, specific heat capacity molar specific heat capacity at constant volume is cv so what is the relation connecting cp and cv okay so what is the relation connecting cp and cv cp and cv what is the relation for that first i am considering the first law of thermodynamics delta q equals delta u plus delta w i am finding out delta q by delta t that is equal to delta u by delta t plus delta w by delta t okay so this one i am first considering at con relation between cp and cv isn't it so first i am considering at constant volume okay if volume is constant how we can write down this delta q by delta t at constant volume equals delta u by delta t at constant volume plus delta w p delta v by delta t at constant volume okay v is constant so what will be delta v that is zero so this will be equal to zero so you can write it as delta q by delta t at constant volume is equal to delta u by delta t at constant v okay so now i can write it as now it is delta q by delta t at constant pressure i am considering at constant pressure at constant pressure delta q by delta t at constant pressure will be equal to delta u by delta t at constant pressure plus delta w that is p delta v p delta v by delta t at constant pressure so here the both the cases we are considering for a change in temperature of delta t isn't it so delta u is internal energy depends only on temperature internal energy depends only on temperature in both the cases delta t is same in delta t is same for both cases so what we can write down delta u by delta t at constant pressure if it is at constant pressure uh, or if it is at constant volume delta u by delta t will be same isn't it so we can write it as delta u by delta t at constant volume so shall i write it over there like that so delta q by delta t at constant pressure will be equal to delta q by delta t at 
constant volume since the left hand sides are equal so instead of delta u by delta t at constant v i can write it as delta q by delta t at constant v right so here i am writing this equation equation 1 i am rewriting it as delta q by delta t at constant p equals delta instead of delta u by delta t at constant pressure what i can write it delta u by delta t at constant volume what is delta u by delta t at constant volume delta q by delta t at constant volume so i am writing it like that plus p delta v by delta t at constant pressure okay so delta q by for one mole of gas for one mole of gas if i am considering what is delta q by delta t at constant pressure that is cp what is c you are remembering delta q divided by mu delta t if mu equals 1 what is if mu equals 1 c will be equal to delta q by delta t so delta q by delta t at constant pressure is cp that is equal to delta q by delta t at constant volume is cv plus p delta v by delta t at constant p okay now we are considering the ideal gas equation pv for one mole of gas pv equals rt at constant pressure what we can write p delta v equals r delta t so what is p delta v divided by delta t p delta v by delta t equals r isn't it so here we can write it as cp equals cv plus r or cp minus cv equals r this is the relation connecting uh, cp and cv okay so we started from the first law of thermodynamics delta q equals delta u plus delta w dividing with the delta t okay and at constant volume we found out at constant pressure also we found out but we know internal energy will be changing only with respect to temperature so internal energy if it is pressure or if it is volume that will be same so instead of delta u by delta t at constant pressure we can write it as delta q by delta t at constant volume so delta q by delta t at constant volume for one mole of gas c will be equal to delta q by delta t so instead of delta q by delta t we can write it as c at constant pressure equal c at constant volume plus r this one we got it as r okay so cp minus cv equals r this is the very important derivation what is the relation connecting cp and cv clear next we are going to consider about thermodynamic state variables thermodynamic state variables these are the variables which determines the thermal equilibrium of a system variables which did or parameters which determines the thermal equilibrium of a system whether the system is in thermal equilibrium or not under which condition we will say pressure volume temperature all these parameters are constant then we can say it is our internal energy everything are constant then we can say it is in thermodynamic or thermal equilibrium so the parameters which determines thermal equilibrium of a system is called a thermodynamic state variables pressure volume temperature etc so the parameters which determines the thermal equilibrium of a system is called a thermodynamic state variables okay so the connection between these connection between these thermodynamic state variables are called a equation of states equation of state so you do you know any equation of state for an ideal gas equation pv equals nrt or mu rt here we are considering mu as the number of moles isn't it so pv equals mu rt this is one of the equation of state what is meant by the equation of state the connection between thermodynamic state variables are called this equation of state 
and one more thing next is the if we are drawing a graph between pressure and volume pressure and volume graph is called as isotherms isotherm means it is the graph bit at constant temperature if we are drawing a graph between pressure and volume then we can say it is pv diagrams also we will say it as isotherms okay then next we are going to study about so next is this thermodynamic variables are dividing it into two types they are extensive variables and intensive variables now what is this extensive variables Ex extensive variables means the variables which change with the size of the system that is the variables with which change with size of the system okay so suppose i have a, a vol particular volume of gas with me okay i am dividing this it into two okay this is first part and second part which and all quantities will remain constant okay which pressure pressure volume will become change volume will be dividing it into half isn't it mass also will be dividing it into half but density will remain constant here also density will remain constant temperature remain constant temperature remains constant so which and all are changing with the uh, size mass volume etc will be changing with the uh, this size so the variables which which are changing with respect to size of the system is called the extensive variables variables which are not changing with respect to size not changing with respect to size are called the intensive variables okay clear so what is thermodynamic state variables and extensive variables and intensive variables clear for you okay so these are the main topics which i thought i'll take it today in that cp minus cv equals r that is very important derivation and all these definitions also don't forget to study okay and here um, i want to say one more thing from the previous chapter about the atmospheric pressure because one child asked me one doubt as height increases uh, he is telling i told in the video whether it is height increases what will happen to the pressure he had a confusion if height of the atmosphere increases always remember that height of the atmosphere increases pressure will increase so while we are coming to the ground floor height of the atmosphere is increasing so at the ground floor pressure will be more okay when we are moving to the uh, uh, top floors and all okay if it is 15th floor or 17th floor while we are going height of the atmosphere is decreasing isn't it the atmosphere which is acting pressure on us is decreasing isn't it so as height increases height increases in the sense height of the atmosphere increases pressure will be increasing as height of the atmosphere decreases pressure will decrease okay so that is about the atmospheric pressure which i want to clear about that because one child asked me one doubt in such a manner as comment in comment box and and one more thing and i i told uh, that i'm planning to start another regional channel also so but i'm not going to stop this okay i'll continue the english channel also don't worry and one child asked that also that is why i'm commenting it now replying it to you now okay so uh, that's all that's what i want to communicate it to you okay so and i hope all of you understood all these topics and if you like the channel please don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching bye